Okay, here's the notes. We're still doing properties of exponents and we're seeing them in kind of like a variety of different situations and problems, properties of exponents. And I know we're kind of, we've been working with negative exponents. We've been working with negative exponents, but you're really not going to see them in this problem. You're not going to see them when you see the problem, but you're going to see that you're going to still use what? We're still using, using what? Negative exponents. Okay. You won't see the negative exponents when I give you the problem, but you're going to see that eventually you're going to use a negative exponent. Okay. So what I'm talking about is this. What I'm talking about is this. Okay, let's say for example, this is review, right? This you already know. An example would be, well, if you have a to the negative 3b over a to the 4. Yeah? This is easy. You see a negative exponent, you know that's the one that has to move. I mean, it's pretty obvious which one has to move when you see the negative exponent. Okay. So I know that one's going to have to go down. Okay. So we're left with uh, B, right? We're left with B in the numerator. And now you got what? A4, and then now with what? A to the, that's going to turn to a positive 3? Yeah. yeah, I'm telling you, you know this already. This is not new. You already know this part. Okay, so then the answer is what? Um, B over, and then yeah, the, this is product, product property, right? They add. You keep the A, you add the 4 plus 3, A7. See, you know this already. You know this one already, you already know it. When it's a negative, you'll know, you know which one to move. Okay. And I don't know if we've gotten into these, but I'm, probably, I'm pretty sure you can probably handle it. What if you have something like m negative 8, m negative 3. What if they both have a negative? Have we seen something like this? We did problems like this? Oh, good. Well, do you move both of them? You could. It's not wrong. But then you'll just have to do like an extra step. So you kind of have to think which one would be, I mean, you can only, you'll do this in one move, right? We can do this in one move and not have to move both of them. What do I mean by that? You move the negative 8 down? You move the negative 8 down? Okay. Samantha says move the negative 8 down. Tell me why not move the negative 3 up. Because if you move it, it'll be a negative. Yeah, you can kind of see ahead that it, when I put this up and I add them, it'll give me a negative answer. And that's fine. You can do that and then just, just move it back down, right? Just to have the positive answer. But we know that we can kind of foresee what's going to happen and to know which one to move. So we'll move this one down. That would be the, the single move as opposed to moving this down, moving this up, and then moving another one again, and, right? So when I move this down, well, we have what? Just a one left on the numerator? Yeah. And then you'll have m positive 8, right? Because when you move it down, it changed sign, times the, and then the negative 3 is there. And this is product rule, right? But I know that when these add, I know that when these add what? You'll get a a positive uh, exponent. That's what we want. We can never, we don't want to ever leave any answer with a, with a negative exponent. Okay, so you know this already. See, you already know that. And like I said, today's assignment then is probably going to be easy. You probably already, already know how to do it. Oh, what is this? Hold up. Okay, so these are the problems you're going to see now. Ready? Right, here's the ones for today, and like I said, you probably already know how to do it. Okay, so simplify. So the only thing about the ones today, and I think you've already seen them, is you're not going to see any negative exponents, like I just said earlier. But uh, we'll start with something easy. How about x4 and x, ah, uh, just x. 
See here, they're, they're both positive, right? They're both positive. And I know when it doesn't have an exponent, it's a 1. But it's kind of like, if one of them had a negative, I, knew, I would know which one to move. But what do you do when they're both positive? How do you know which one to move? The smaller one? Yeah. Oh, that's a good, oh, that's good, that's a good way to look at it, right? But do you see how I tell you you're not going to start with any negative exponents, but when I move this up, you're telling me to move this one up? Is that what you're saying? Ah, yeah. oh, okay. So then now, uh, what's left on the bottom? A 1, right? Nothing's there, but we just put a 1. And that'll be x4 times what? Uh-uh, see, that'll be x what? Negative 1, right? Because remember, it's positive here, but when you move it up, it has to change sign. Just like when you have a negative and you move it, it changes the sign. Same thing with this, it changes the sign. Right? And then now we know that when you add these up, you're going to get what? x to the power of 3? Yeah. So they're going to be positive. They're, they're all going to be positive, and then it's you got to determine uh, which one to move. Okay, so then let's uh, pick this up. A5, B3 over, over B7, uh, A squared. Now here's another way they're going to try to mess with you and try to trick you. Anybody see what I did that looks like, looks like a mistake? Yeah, they're not in like alphabetical order. You want to kind of keep everything organized and put it in alphabetical order. Yeah, go ahead, Dean. Yeah, let, let's organize this because see, then you get don't, don't, don't do this one with this one, right? Oh, no, I don't want answers yet. So let's uh, make sure you organize this so you know that the A5 is under the what? The A squared and the, the B3 is under the B7. I mean, you can do that. And then, uh, which ones are going to move which way? See, it's not negative, but when you move it up, it's going to turn negative. And then they're not negative, but when you move them, they're going to turn negative. See, but that's going to be okay because, like I said, I'm just I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you so you just stick with product rule and you don't have to mess with all these crazy other rules. There is quotient rule. Actually, this one there's a quotient rule that I haven't showed you, but. I'm not, I'm not doing it. So what's left up here? A5 and then the what? A the A negative 2, see? Because you moved it up. And then over here would be B7 was already there, and then now with the B negative 3. Okay, so I think, like I said, you probably already knew how to do it, so that's good. So what, uh, what are we going to get here? 5 take away 2, right, because you're just adding now. 5 take away 2 is A cubed over B4. Yeah. Okay, so here's a problem that I'm going to put here that's from the actual sample, the worksheet here. It looks like this. What number is this? 1, 2, this is number 3. Okay. What about something like this? Um... It says 3y squared z3 over, oh yeah, 3y squared z3 over 6x4 y4 z3. Okay, well, again, uh, luckily these aren't too unorganized, but you can see the 3 is going to go with the 6. Those numbers are going to reduce the way you reduce numbers. Um, the x4 is kind of just by itself. You can put a little, like, just kind of leave a little space. 
There's nothing that goes with the X4. The Ys is a Y2 with a Y4, right? And the Z3 and the Z3. What happens like what happens here with the Z3 and the Z3? What what you guys see why it cancels out? Why though? Ta like explain. It'll be a zero. Anytime you see a thing with a zero, they're just put it there to mess to mess with you. It's not there. Like how many Z's, Z's are there? None, right? So yeah, these are gonna just subtract out and they cancel each other out. Three of these divide out with three of these. Okay, they're gone. Z's are gone. And what are we gonna do with the three and the six? Move, three down. Move the three down. Move the six up. Oh my God, these are just regular numbers. You just reduce the way you reduce three over six. Remember this moving up and down business and all that? That's just for exponents, not for whole numbers. Here we just reduce, right? Three goes into three and three goes into six, right? Three goes into three one time and three goes into six two times. Yeah, you just reduce. That, those are just regular whole numbers. All this moving up and down business, that's for the variables that have the exponents. All right, does everybody agree the X4 is fine? There's nothing. So the only thing we got to work is, is that, right? And once we bring it down and you subtract, okay, can you... You think you can tell me what the answer is? What's going to be left in the numerator? One. There's a one here. This already canceled. That's a one there. One times one is one. And this one's going to go down, right? So what's left on top? Well, nothing, but you put a one. Correct. Correct. Over two. X4 is still there. And then you know you when you subtract that, it's... Uh, y squared. Is that, is that okay? So I mean it looks like an intimidating problem. See when you look at this you're like oh my god all this stuff. But when you start just separating things and, and just kind of looking at them individually it's not that it's not that bad. Okay another one that's from the worksheet here that again it looks uh, kind of tricky at first but then when you when you start kind of focusing on things individually, it's easy. Okay, number four. I'm just gonna copy it down. And you know what, so you won't think I'm just making things up. Look, see, I have it right here. I have a worksheet that says notes that I printed out. I'm just gonna zoom into it. Okay, it's this one here. It says number six here, but for your notes, it's number four. I want you to do this, this one, number six. Where is it, this one? Can you guys see that? Let me focus it a little bit. It says 2Q M3P3. And then it says 2MP3Q2. Okay, I'm going to copy it over here. This is number four. 2Q. M three P three. Bless you. And what? Two M P three Q two. Oh. Okay. I I'm not sure. I haven't checked the way the answers are are on this worksheet, but. Honestly, when you have variables, you want to put them in alphabetical order. So let's, uh, what is this, L-M-N-M-M-N-O-P-Q. So M-P-Q, right? So it'll be 2-P-3, 2-P-3, wait a minute, no, M-3, oh, I messed up. Let me do it over here. 2-M-3-P-3-Q. And then I'm going to put this in order and organize it. That's 2 m P3, Q2. You see how it just looks easier this way? As opposed to when they give you the problem, they, they mess them up for you. Obviously, they do it on purpose. Okay, now it's easy to kind of just like, I'm going to look at that, I'm going to look at that. I mean, you don't have to draw lines. I'm just showing you how you can just focus your attention on the parts. And, and Which ones are going to be easy to just get out of the way right here? The two divided by two, they just, it's one over one, just they're gone, right? There's no more numbers? Two and the two are gone, and what else? 
and the P3 and the P3 buy. See, they just they just put stuff like clutter just to oh. Sometimes they just put clutter just to mess with you. And so honestly, does everybody agree I'm left with M3Q over MQ squared? Yeah. So, oops. So what? Yeah, you know this one's going to go up. I mean, if you're actually going to show work, this one would go up, and this one would go down, and you'd have this M3 times M negative 1, right, which is what you're doing, and Q2, which is already down there, times what? Q negative 1, right? If it, if it doesn't have a number, it's a 1, but then you drop it down, it's negative 1. Is everybody doing this? Okay, final answer. Ugh, m squared, ugh, m squared, yeah, 3 take over m squared over 2 take over 1 is just 1, q. Okay, last one. Again, I'll put, you, I'll put this, I'll put it here from the worksheet that I have. Uh, where is it, number 7? Where's number 7? Oh, more this way. This one, number seven. Last one. Okay, do that one. Okay, so I would rewrite it W, X, Y, Z, so it'll be 4, X, 3. Why? Well, well, why can't the block with a zero? Yeah, you see how they just put it there just to put something with a zero? You don't have to put the Y zero. It's, it means there's no Y, so don't even write it. X, Y, so just X and Z, no? Mm -hmm. X, 3, Z, 1? That's really the only thing that's up here, X, 3, Z, 1. And then what's down here? A 2 x4 z4 so like i said they'll put something with a zero to throw you off they'll put them like not in order but um once you organize it and you just i think it just becomes a lot easier okay anybody get the final answer here dean go ahead what you get um, two over x and then z to the okay so two on the numerator over X, Z3, like this. Yep, yeah, that's right. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so yeah, that, that's the 2 that stays on top. That's the only thing that stays on top. This 3 comes on the bottom, it subtracts. This 1 comes to the bottom, it subtracts. So, yeah, that's right. Okay, so like I said, I think... I think you kind of already knew what to do with it, but it doesn't have initially negative exponents, but you know, when you move them up, you kind of are using negative exponents. Mm -hmm. But it looks like you guys got it. All right.